we now know how to implement procedures and recursive procedures in Scheme. But what about working with data? Well, we can do that too. In Scheme, there's a built-in type called a list, which is really a linked list under the hood, built up out of pairs, where each pair contains the first element of the list and then the rest of the list. Now, pairs are more general than that. They can be used to bind together any pair of values into one combined value, but their most common usage is to build lists. Unfortunately, back when Lisp was invented in the late 50s, computer scientists liked to use very confusing names for things. So, in a pair, instead of calling the first element the first and the second element of the second, and the constructor that creates a pair something like pair, instead, all variants of Lisp tend to use the following terminology. Cons is a procedure that creates a pair. If I cons together one and two, I create a structure that looks like this, a pair. And that pair is built in. Car is a procedure that returns the first element of a pair. So if I have the result of consing one and two, and I call car on that, I'll get one. Couldr is a procedure that returns the second element of a pair. And it's often to refer to the car and the couldr of a pair. Finally, nil is the empty list. Now, I haven't mentioned lists yet. I've only talked about pairs. But I can build a list by pairing together a first element and the rest of the list. Now, if the rest of the list is empty, I've created a linked list structure that represents a sequence containing the number 2. Oftentimes, in a diagram, of this structure will, instead of writing out nil, just write a slash right there. And that's a fine way to diagram scheme pairs and scheme lists. A non-empty list is a scheme pair in which the second element is either nil or a scheme list. This recursive definition has to end in nil, the empty list. So just like a linked list in Python, we're building a list out of a first element and the rest of the list. That's a scheme list right there containing the number 2. That's a scheme list containing the number 1 and the number 2. I build it by constructing two different pairs. Scheme lists are written by the scheme interpreter in parentheses separated by spaces. So even though I built this nested structure by pairing together 1, with a pair containing 2 and nil. The way that Scheme displays it is in parentheses 1 space 2. So just the values that you see in the linked list structure. A dotted list has some value for the second element of the last pair that is not a list. So a dotted list, or a malformed list, is something that doesn't follow the recursive structure I described. So for instance, if I cons together 1 and 2, I build a pair containing 1 and 2. That's a legal thing to do in Scheme. But if you display it, you'll see a dot there. That dot is not a decimal point. It's separating the 1 and the 2 and indicating that I do not have the cons1, cons2, nil recursive structure that I would expect in a list. But instead, I just have a pair containing 1 and 2. Anytime you see something with a dot in it, that means it's not a well-formed list. It doesn't follow the recursive definition of a scheme list being a pair where the second element is nil or a scheme list. I can still get the car of x and I'll get 1, or the cutter of x and I'll get 2. If I cons together 1 with the result of building up this scheme list containing 2, 3, and 4, I'll build this recursive structure and it will be displayed as 1, 2, 3, and 4 separated by spaces with no dot. So no dot means you've built a proper linked list structure. Let's look at some more examples. If I cons 1 with cons 2 nil, I get 1 and 2. On the other hand, if I cons 1 and 2, I get 1 dot 2. 
Now, if I const to with nil, I end up with a list containing only one element. It's not a dotted list because the second element of this cons, the cutter, is the empty list. So this is a well-formed list. And so as you can see, it uh, is displayed without any dots. Now, it's possible for the dot to appear even in a dotted list or a malformed list that has multiple elements. So I could cons1 and then cons2 with 3. And what I get here is quite different from a well-formed list with the same contents because it's the case that the last pair does not have a list or nil as its second element. Instead, it has a number 3. And so that's why the dot appears. Now, for any of these values, I can start asking for their car and cutter. So for instance, if I define x to be cons 1, 2, and I define y to be cons 1, cons 2, nil, then x is dotted, y is not. The car of x is the same as the car of y. The cutter of x is a number, whereas the cutter of y is a list. So the rest of y, which is a well-formed list, is also a list. I can even ask for the cutter of the cutter of y, and I'll get nil, or the empty list, displayed as uh, parentheses with nothing in them. Now, the elements of a list can be anything you want. So for instance, I could place a pair, 1, 2, within a list. I've built a list like uh, cons 2, nil. So it's just a uh, one element, well-formed list. But in this case, instead of having a number as the element, I have a pair, which is written as a dotted list. I could also cons together this pair and the number 3, and I would get two dots. One dot here is describing this element of the malformed list, whereas it's this dot that indicates that the list itself is not well-formed. Now, I could also have nested lists with no dots. I could, for instance, cons together cons1, cons2, nil. And this is a list containing 1 and 2 that's an element of a longer list, which also contains 3 and 4. Close the cons4, close the cons3, close the cons1. And I get a nested list where this expression here built an element in a list with three elements. Here are some other useful procedures that are built in that you should know about. You can ask if something's a pair. So cons1, 2 is a pair. Nil is not a pair. 3 is not a pair. You can ask if something's nil. A pair is not nil. You can also build a list using the list procedure which takes as many arguments as you want and puts them into a list. Now, this list is a pair. It does have the same recursive structure as if I had written cons1, cons2, cons3, cons4, nil. And in fact, after building this list, I could ask for the car, and that would give me one. Or I could ask for the cutter, and that would give me the rest of the list. Or the rest of the rest of the list by the cutter of the cutter of the list. If I ask for the car of the cutter of the cutter of the list, then I'll get the number 3, which is the third element in the list. Let's say I had defined x as cons1, 2. That's a dotted list. And I wanted to create a list without the dot. Well, one thing I could do is list the car of x and the cutter of x. That's equivalent to saying, I want to cons together the car of x with the rest of the list, which in this case will contain the cutter of x and nil. So you can see that what cons does is it takes a single element and combines it with the rest of the list. Whereas what list does is a procedure that creates a recursive structure just by taking in a bunch of individual elements. There are cases when you have the elements and you want to put them together into a list, and so you call list. There are also cases where you have the rest of the list and you want to build a larger list with one more element on the front, and for that, you use cons. 
Finally, let's define a procedure. The length of a list s can be computed by asking if it's the case that s is nil. Then the length is just 0. Otherwise, the length is 1 more than the length of the rest of s. So if I build a list with 1, 2, 3, and 4 in it, and then I ask for its length, it will tell me the length is 4. Now if I had built a list that only has three elements, one of which happens to be a list, like that, and I ask for its length, it only says 3. And that's because there are three elements, the number 1, the list 2, 3, and the number 4. In order to compute all of the numbers in here, I'd have to do something else besides this implementation. But here you'll see a pattern that appeared in linked lists and will appear all over the place in the scheme. A typical way of recursively processing a list is to check if it's null, and if not, then maybe you do something with the car, but most importantly, you make a recursive call on the cutter.